you for joining us for Pet Connect. I'm Tara Douglas. Just want to thank the community on behalf of the shelter for all of the support that's been coming through that shelter lately. We've had a lot of adoptions. We've had a lot of donations of supplies and food. We've had volunteers showing up each Saturday to walk the dogs and volunteers helping at adoption events. And we also have Toyota of Silicaga, don't forget that, that has sponsored adoptions for November and December. So thank you to everyone who's come out to help the situation at the Silicaga shelter. We've, we're coming together, so that's great to see. But I wanna spend the next few weeks talking about what you need to think about when adopting a dog, because there's so much that comes into that. And we're gonna talk about our first um, pet of the week right now. And this is Rutker. Rutker is, um, he is heartworm positive, but he's already had his first treatment. So he is well on his way to um, recovering from heartworms. And he is a very active, very sweet dog. He's been at the shelter for about a year now, and he is one of the volunteer favorites. He is quite sweet on walks. He loves people. He loves kids. He's fine with other dogs. So he would really be a wonderful dog for a household. He did get adopted, and um, he was adopted as a gift for someone, only to find out that, that the recipient of Rutger could not have a dog at um, a rental situation. And so the person who adopted him as that gift decided that they couldn't keep him, so he is back at the shelter. Though we do have some information about him, because he was in a household. We have pictures of him hanging out. Um, he was an inside dog for them, so he is a, a very good dog. But that's why we want to talk a little bit about what goes into adopting a dog. So we want to make sure that, that with um, all this outpouring of support, we have some quite successful adoptions and um, that we all put, put our heads together and figure out uh, where these dogs need to be. But Rutger is definitely a great dog, and he is available, again, at the Silicaga Shelter. So come on out this weekend to meet him and um, get to experience how sweet this dog is. But speaking of um, deciding exactly what kind of dog you need and what goes into adopting a dog, I brought Rebecca White on the show this morning because she has a new puppy. Yes. And so there's a lot that goes into a puppy. Yes. Yes, a lot. <laughs> so, now, Rebecca owns Biolaw Fitness. And so we'll talk some about um, her wonderful classes that she teaches. But let's begin with your dog situation. So let's talk about Daisy. Yes, Daisy, she's about nine weeks old. Um, we uh, decided it was time to have an inside dog. Uh, we have a another dog, his name's Domino. He was a stray. Um, he came and wandered up. Uh, he was actually dumped on the road that we lived on um, about three years ago. So we've had him, but um, I, I, with, I have anxiety. Mm -hmm. So having an inside dog and a companion, someone to cuddle with and um, is, always a positive thing so um, and we had um, a chihuahua and she was 10 years old and she passed mm -hmm. so uh, and that was really heartbreaking for me because um, we were like she was my best friend so yeah. um, so we waited about two years and then I was like okay it's time um, <clears throat> for me to you know find something or a puppy that fits for me so uh, we found Daisy and uh, brought her home as a new puppy, very <laughs> new. Um, like I said, she was about eight weeks old. Uh, a lot of preparation before we even brought her home. Um, a few things that I would recommend if you have a pet inside our crate. Um, a new puppy, something also that I would recommend that's been a lifesaver is a playpen. They have playpens for puppies back you know a few years ago they didn't have all these cool things that you could you know prepare for a new puppy so we have her a playpen she has a crate um, so it was a lot of preparation mm -hmm. um, I had everything set up and ready for her when she came home um, and it is a full-time job I bet it is because you know puppies aren't for everyone yeah and it sounds like you did all of your research you've had puppies before mm -hmm. you've you've acquired all of those exciting things that you need to, to have a puppy that, that can be successful yes. in your household. Yes. Because right now, it's, uh, you know, with the, with the holidays, there's so many people that want to uh, adopt a dog potentially, and uh, you, know, you get kind of caught up in that holiday season, and like, oh yeah. yeah, let's get us a puppy, but you know, puppies are work. Yeah, it so. is a lot of work. Like this morning before I came here, 6 a.m., first thing first, not getting coffee or anything. It's going to get her out of her crate, mm -hmm. taking her outside, 
um, making sure she has her food. Um, and with my job at Bilo Fitness, it allows me to be home, you know, a good bit. So I'm not working all day. So I'll go teach a class immediately when I get home. I take her outside to use the bathroom. She's already trained um, to use the bathroom, you know, pretty well right now. She's only had two accidents. Um, at, in the house, but uh, so take her outside, then come in, um, and immediately uh, reward her for using the bathroom. Any kind of good behavior, you always want to reward that. Um, and then I say playtime. She runs straight to the dining room. She knows what that is. We play for about 20 or 30 minutes, um, and then you know puppies are puppies. They get mm -hmm. kind of rambunctious and snippy and bitey, and so and whenever that starts happening, I kind of distract her with like a treat and I work on her training. She's already learned how to sit, um, come, and I'm working on stay. She gets excited. <laughs> so, um, but she's very smart and they're very trainable, but you have to put the time in. Absolutely, so. and when you read, you know, I, I certainly encourage if anybody's going to adopt a dog, uh, do like Rebecca's describing. She, I know you've read a lot. She's watched TikTok videos. She's told yeah, me about TikTok. And so there's a, there's a lot of information out there. There are a lot of good trainers in the area too if you decide to go that route, but you've got a lot of information right at your fingertips mm -hmm. because as you're saying, training comes into play. That's a big part of owning yes. a dog, not just how much time do I have? Like you also mentioned, you're, you're touching all of those things that people need to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of dog do you want? What kind of situation are you in? What, you yeah. know, how much time do you have for it? The training. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, I mentioned, and you, and you talked about how you were, you were getting some training tips from TikTok videos. So what all have you gleaned from that? Well, um, I've watched a lot of, a lot of TikToks. I'm obsessed. She's a dash hound, so they're, they're fun, but they're also stubborn. <laughs> um, so I've been watching TikToks about dash hounds, reading up about dash hounds. Um, one of the first things that um, I saw was immediately when you get them start as young as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and you can train an old dog new tricks because okay. Domino was... He was about a year old whenever he wandered up um, at our house, and now he, he's crate trained. And we do that by rewarding good behavior. You ignore yes. bad behavior, reward good behavior. Mm -hmm. So I learned that, um, and it's just consistency. Like, you have to be consistent, just like you are with your kids. You can't say, oh, no, don't do that, then allow them to do that. They're never yeah. going to learn. And it's a lifetime of training. Yes. You, you, can't, you can't slack up with a dog, especially yeah. a smart dog, because they'll... Yeah they'll <laughs> change the rules on you. Yes, I had someone post um, under one of my Facebook posts, because I like to post pictures, mm -hmm. daily dose of Daisy, that's what mm -hmm. I call it. So, um, and they're like, oh, she's got you trained. And I'm like, well, you know, we're kind of like battling it out mm -hmm. right now, but you have to let them know that you're the, the head of the pack, you know. Um, so, but, and they're very fast learners. You can start very young. Um, and two, I've also learned uh, a trainer said once on a TikTok that if your puppy has an accident in the house, then it's your fault. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true. And because they give you signs that they need to go outside um, or you're not taking them out enough. And a schedule, they need a schedule just like a, a child needs a schedule. A routine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do the same thing every day. Like I come home, I take her outside, we have playtime. She goes in her playpen to kind of calm down a little bit. A little bit later, again, outside, come in, reward, playtime, mm -hmm. back in. It's the same thing, and it's working. That's great. And again, you've done so much good research. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I certainly applaud you for, because in, in doing, you know, working with the shelter, talking to people that have adopted dogs, the things that you're talking about are all those top of the list things to think about when mm -hmm. adopting a dog, and yeah. you've put a lot of thought into that. Yeah. Now you also, uh, you mentioned that, um, uh, uh, that you wanted a certain breed, and yes. you know there you you have the opportunity if you adopt a dog at the shelter, and we we can know uh, by looking at them sort of what you're going to get into. And so you know breed specific, there are mm -hmm. lots of different um, traits and characteristics, and every mm -hmm. dog's different. You know, not yeah. every dog is going to have those traits and characteristics, but mm -hmm. you can um, know that you're going to have some work to do on any dog, but you might have some things to um, to think about that are breed specific. So with the dachshund, what's what all are you dealing with with uh, this sweet little dog? Well, she, um, uh, Dotsons are very, very loyal. And I... And, oh, there's a picture of Daisy. Oh, <laughs> uh, and she, she looks so sweet and innocent right there. Um, 
but Datsuns are very, very loyal. They're very smart, um, and you have to take into effect the um, the traits that they have mm -hmm. that are built into their breed. Like Datsuns look cute, but they're they're hunters, um, and I can already tell when we're playing that she is stalking her prey, mm -hmm. and I let her do that because that's in her blood. So you it's have good to take. Yes, yeah, so yeah. she gets to. Um, practice some of her mm -hmm. natural built-in traits um, but they are very loyal and that's one of the things that I loved about um, the Datsun. Um, I was a Chihuahua person. I never thought I would be a Dash Hound uh, person but my last dog was a Chihuahua and that's Domino right there. Um, he's the the fella that wandered up. He adopted us so he loved those Christmas lights. I love his necklace. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, and like I said, um, he's a very, very smart dog. I, I always tell people he could probably be in the circus and be mm -hmm. one of those dogs that balances on the ball because they're, he's so smart. And he's got, he's another hunter type dog. He's got some terrier in him and um, he loves to hunt for rabbits and squirrels. I'll go outside and I'll just see his butt up in the air because he'll be <laughs> digging a hole trying to get a rat or, you know, whatever's out there but um but yeah the dots and it was because of the loyalty and i just want someone to you know a little puppy to cut right now there's not much cuddling going on but you'll get there yes we'll get there <laughs> she'll calm down yeah but she's a great dog and so is domino so they both have they're very different um and i love them both very much. And you had talked about with you know, making sure that they have interactive kind of playtime that you found some very interesting toys that can keep them yes. occupied and yes. and getting their breed specific yes. um, traits one, out. One thing that I found was a it's a ball um, and you put a treat in it and the treat they can't get the treat out so they have to like try to figure out how to get the treat out and then of course we have her little stuffed animals and we'll kind of hide them over here and squeak them and you know she has to go mm -hmm. find them and uh and then there there's something called a licking mat which will occupy them you put a little peanut butter mm -hmm. and you know it will ca calm them there are so many different things they even have puzzles for dogs which are so cool you put the food in the in the puzzle mm -hmm. and then they have to figure out and so and a foraging mat Daisy has a foraging mat in her playpen when we feed her it's a great way to slow down the eating because you know mm -hmm. sometimes they scarf the food down so fast but it also gives her an opportunity to kind of dig and try to hunt and find her food so a lot of cool products out oh, there for great. animals and you've given us so much good information that I hope that if anyone out there is um, if you're thinking about adopting a puppy especially from the shelter or a puppy from anywhere that you'll think about all the different things that that Rebecca has um, has mentioned because you've got some really good information. Yeah, you, you're you. doing a great job with I'm, Daisy. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done a great job with Domino. Yeah. Now before we go, let's talk about Biolive Fitness and what's what's going on in, in your business and the fitness world right now. Okay, well I'm staying busy. So um, in Biolive Fitness we have kind of went toward a path of senior health um, I work at the Senior Center um, two days a week, Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, doing chair Zumba, which is so much fun. If you've never tried chair Zumba, I highly recommend you come out. It's for men and women. We have a couple of gentlemen that come. Um, it's so fun. We do our dance class while seated in the chair. Then we do circle mobility chair, which is a mobility class. We work on full range of motion, which is great for all ages, but it's awesome for seniors absolutely um so and then i offer that class also on fridays for people of all ages and that's a five dollar charge at the um, silicaga parks and rec um, i still teach the regular zumba it's mondays at 5 30. it's a five dollar charge um and i think that's about it right now i'm staying busy i also work with the dance studio i don't just teach like zumba classes mm -hmm. We do circle mobility with the dancers. To, it's considered an active recovery, so it's great for dancers. So on Thursdays, I go out um, to Pressure Point Dance Academy in Childersburg and work with their dancers out there. So I'm busy, and you know I'm loving what I'm doing. That's good, and you are such a wonderful teacher. So I hope people get out there Thank to your you. classes at Parks and Rec because I like your shirt, Happiness in Motion. And yes, ha happiness is found in motion too. Yes. So yeah, um, yeah, we're, we are so fortunate to have you here in the community teaching yeah. these classes oh, and getting people you. moving and out there Appreciate doing it. what they should be doing. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, thank you Rebecca, for having me. Thank you so much for coming on the You're show welcome. and thank you for telling us a, 
uh, your experience with the new puppy and telling us about your business and we'll have you on again. You can give us um, uh, updates. Uh, updates of you We have our daily dose of Daisy on Facebook, which yes. you can you can come on and give us a periodic yes. update on Daisy here I on the show. I would love to do that. So make sure to um, come out to the shelter this weekend from 11 to 1 to help walk the dogs. And if you want to meet Rutger, remember he's available again and he is a very sweet dog. So come out to meet him and think about all those different things that we talked about if you're thinking about adopting a, a puppy or a dog to bring into your family. We also have the auction coming up because with all of these adoptions at the shelter, a lot of those dogs are heartworm positive and Feral Dogs of Avondale Mill is holding an auction so that we can raise money for the heartworm treatment. Like I said, Rutgers already started his, but we have so many more that need the treatment. So please follow Feral Dogs of Avondale on Facebook to get updates. And if you have anything you would like to donate, any crafts, any, um, any items that, that you have, you can contact us and let us know if we can use them. And we're gonna get that auction going the beginning of December so we can start these heartworm treatments. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll have more Daybreak after these messages.